So this month, there were four uh, webinars. Part one was about the Knossos method, the quality assurance and the source model. Part two was the import from GIS and the creating of the main model, it was last week. Today, we do part three, the tiling and calculation part. And next week, I will present the EU population exposure option in Predictor. All the four parts have to do with this project flow. As I explained in my previous sessions, you start with importing your GIS data in order to create your main model. Within Predictor, you then create the receivers around the facades. We've done that last week. And now today I will show you how to tile the main model, then calculate the tiles, and then import the tiles back in the main model, especially the results, of course. Then you have all the results of the complete agglomeration in one model. Then next week, I explain how you can use the EU population exposure of Predictor on all your results. And then in fact, you're done in Predictor. Then of course, you need to start your reporting to the EU. So from Predictor, you export your EU population exposure either to Excel or GIS for further processing and making your report. Let me first start in Predictor. What I want to show you is first how you can tile the main model. I'll do a small demonstration and how you can start the calculation. And then I will continue the um, PowerPoint and the presentation. And during this presentation, the calculation will finish and then I can also show you how you can import the tiles in the main model. So I'm going to switch to Predictor. This is an example model. You can tile the model by using Tile Model. So you go to the Model menu and you click on Tile Model. I will explain more about tiles later during the session. For now, you will have to set the tile size in meters. That's in fact the receiver area and the buffer area around this tile. Then you need to position the tile based on the calculation points. I will show you after I've executed this option what the tiles are. So I click on execute. Now the tiles are created. This is not a big model. So four tiles will be created. After the tiles are created, you can look in the Open Model Manager and you can go to the new area. So creating tiles means in a predictor project that a new version, sorry, a new area is created. Within this area, there's tiles, the name of the area is the name of the model that you are tiling. Within this area, there's a version named tiles and then you see the four new models. We call it the tiles. What you also see is that there is a tile map. The tile map can be opened. And this is in fact, are only four div areas that show the tile uh, area. And of course, if you close this one, you open the tile as a background, open background model, the tile map, then, as a background model, you can see what has been done. Here, there are the four tiles. The tiling starts left underneath, and the receiver area is, in fact, in this case, a grid. So, the lower position of the grid is here, and the most left position of the grid is here. So, the first tile starts over here, 3,000 meter, then the next tile, then the next tile, and then the next tile. If I now open the tiles separately, I switch the tiles and I open the tiles separately. To wait until they all are all open, and then I'll do a while a tile vertical, and of course the uh, the tile map it, itself, or at least the. Uh, the, the, the main model I can, I can close and I'll do a tile model again. So now you see the tiles. 
this is the tile, this is a tile, and this is a tile, and this is a tile. So you see that Predict has nicely uh, clipped the items outside the buffer zone. Uh, I will explain more about buffer zone and tiling zone. Now, of course, we want to calculate the tiles. So I click on the first tile and I click on the cloud calculation. Then this tile is uploaded to our cloud server. And the calculation is started. I'll do the same for the second tile. So now also the sidebar is very convenient. You don't have to use the menu options. You simply start your calculation from the sidebar. So that's the second tile, third tile. And then my last tile. Especially for larger models, uh, the tiling, of course, is convenient. And also for larger models, the cloud calculation service is, of course, very convenient. To check the progress in the cloud calculation service, you can go to calculations, cloud calculation service. You see already that the first tile has already start, uh, started calculating. The other tiles are still pending, but they will soon uh, change from the status pending to calculating. In fact, you can close Predictor now, then you can go to sleep because you will be notified by email in the morning. You see, well, your calculation is done. Well, in this case, I will show you that this calculation will take about 10 minutes. So during this session, I will show you uh, how to download the calculated tiles again. Okay, I'll switch back to my presentation, to my PowerPoint. Tiling, what is tiling? Tiling is an optimization uh, optimization technique for large scale models without any loss of accuracy if you use it correctly. Tiling can also be used when the number of obstacle edges exceeds the limits of your license. So obstacle edges are uh, segments of buildings, facades of buildings, and or, or the number of emitters exceed the license limit, or the terrain model has more than 1 million terrain edges. And the tiling option is available in the G, the A, and the B configuration. The I and the C configurations do not support tiling. So if you look at the G configuration, the standard model size supports 20,000 obstacle edges and 4,000 emitters. So that means if, for instance, the building has four facades, it means you can have 5,000 buildings uh, for calculation. Okay? In every predictor configuration, you can create uh, unlimited number of, of build, or at least the number of buildings is not limited. The limitation is only when you start a calculation. So the G size is uh, 20,000 obstacle edges and 4,000 emitters. Emitter, an emitter is either a point source or a, a road segment or a railway segment. Okay, if you've got a railway of 100 uh, segments, 100 nodes, then there are about 100 emitters. Then the plus size has 60,000 obstacle edges, 12,000 emitters, and the advanced model size has 1 million obstacle edges and 200,000 emitters. So tiling is a useful technique uh, and also for optimization because, uh, of course, for a certain calculation point with a certain um, um, fetching radius, it, it makes no sense of taking into account uh, sources that are 10,000 meter, 10 kilometer away. Uh, so you really can optimize your calculation. So what does the tiling do? It splits up your main model into multiple tiled models. You have to uh, enter a tile size in meters and a buffer size. The tile size is, is used for clipping uh, uh, all receivers outside the tile size area are clipped and outside the buffer size all other items are also clipped. So the calculation points are for the blue area, so the calculation is in effect in the blue area, but of course to calculate uh, 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 accurate you also need to take into account uh, the roads and the buildings outside that receiver area up to the buffer distance. So this is a very well-known technique 
uh, for optimizing your calculations. What's also important to realize is that all tiled models have the same calculation settings as the main model. So when you start the tiling, tile model, then all tiled models have the same calculation settings. So of course you should first be sure that the calculation settings of the main model are correct. Then something about calculation settings. An important setting is the fetching radius. Uh, here you see the fetching radius, in this case, two and a half thousand meters. The fetching radius is the distance in meters around a receiver uh, or a grid point. And only those sources and objects that are fully or partly within that fetching radius are considered in the calculation. So uh, the objects and, uh, and, and sources outside that fetching radius uh, are not considered for the calculation of that specific receiver point. Uh, other items will have no influence on the calculation. So that's one important setting, the fetching radius. Another important setting is the reflex. Here you can set the number, of, the order of reflections, and also what's important, the minimum facade distance for reflection and the maximum facade distance for reflection. And as we all know, when you create receivers at facade, you put them at 10 centimeters from the facade, and for receivers at facades, you should not calculate a reflection. So that means that the minimum distance should be set larger than 10 centimeters. So for default, 50 centimeters, that means that no reflection is calculated if the receiver is closer to the facade than 50 centimeters. And because uh, in predictor you create receivers at facades with a default distance of 10 centimeters, this is correct. No, no, calculate, no reflection is calculated because According to the Environmental Noise Directive, you should calculate the incident noise level. That means no reflection in your own facade. Okay, let me switch back to predictor. Let me see. Okay, you see that now all four tiles are calculating. Uh, the first tile is already uh, finished. So that goes well. So this is Again, the steps that I just showed you for a larger model, these are, of course, pictures. This is a, a larger model. You click on tile model. Then you need to enter your tile size and your buffer size. In many cases, I've seen a buffer size of two and a half thousand meters. And, um, uh, I expect that uh, within this year, there will be uh, some more good, pride, uh, good, good practice guides coming and developing. Um, and several countries are already doing so. So there will become more uh, information available and more guidance information available on the calculation settings. And um, because in the Knossos method itself, um, there's not much uh, guidance for this type of, of settings. So then after the tiling process, you end up with, in this case, four tiles uh, and the tile map, which is convenient of showing the, the, the position of the tiles. Then uh, th this is the tile map. Then you can calculate the tiled models uh, either by local calculation or the cloud calculation. The cloud calculation, of course, is very convenient also if you need more resources because the Knossos EU method is a more complex method, more detailed method than the interim methods uh, that were used for the previous round of noise maps. So you can expect a, 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 a longer calculation time, a higher calculation time. Then after the calculation is finished, you can download the results. In this case, in case of a cloud calculation, of course. And let me just check if this it's already done. Okay, there are two completed and two still calculating. So I will show you in just a few minutes. So after your calculations are done, you can download the results. And then you can use the model import tile results in your main model. And then you can import the results of the tiled models in your main model. And that's of course convenient because then you end up with one main model again with all your results and that main model can be used 
for the EU population exposure. Let me just check if it's, it's almost done. And then, like I explained, you end up with one big model. And then, of course, you can show the table of results. You can have hundreds of thousands of results uh, in the table of results. Um, you can sort it. You can copy it to clipboard. Uh, you can do all kinds of other stuff. But, of course, you can also show nice pictures in Predictor. For instance, color-coded results. And if I zoom in a little bit, the next uh, uh, slide, you see that the receivers around facades are only created uh, around buildings with the function residential. That's what I showed uh, last week, how to create receivers around facades only for those buildings that have the function residential. And this is, of course, a nice picture. Also, you can, of course, show the contours if you have also uh, uh, calculated the grid. And in this case, the agglomeration boundary is very useful for reusing uh, as a grid because you can simply copy and paste your agglomeration boundary uh, as a grid. Okay, I assume that now we're ready. Well, I'll start downloading. This one is completed. So I select this model and I say download. So then it's downloading the results of this model and it's integrating again in the main model. I download these results. And they're integrated. Now the, the other two, uh, the other models also completed. So now I can simply click on download all. And um, internally in the predictor project, uh, there's an identification that predictor knows which tiled models belong to which main model. So there, there can be no mistake that you're downloading the wrong results or whatever. That's fully taken care of in Predictor. So you end up, in fact, uh, uh, of course, your, 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 your tiled models itself have also results. So you can also show the results of your, of your single tiles. Uh, every, tiled models, every tiled model also have its own result. But because I've now downloaded the result, the results, I, can, can, uh, I now can go back to my main model, Alan is the demo three, and now I can show the full results of this model because it's integrated now. I've just downloaded uh, the results. Oh, sorry about it. My mouse seems to be stuck. Yeah, okay, this is the model, sorry. So these are your complete results. And of course, you can make nice pictures in Predictor. And this is a nice hilly area on the coast of Spain. Let's hope that we can all go on holiday again this summer. Starting the 3D view. So if I now go here, so now you see the, the town of Blanes near the coast, on the coast of, of Spain. So in a short time, I've shown you how to tile the main model, how to calculate the, uh, the tiles. Um, you can do that either by a local calculation or using the Predictor Lima cloud calculation. And I've just shown you how convenient the cloud calculation is. Because also during your cloud calculation, you can uh, uh, use you can continue using Predictor, uh, and you can also start a local calculation. So that's that's also a benefit of the cloud calculation. And I've shown you how to import the tiles. Just going to mute the microphone, and I'm showing you how to import the tiles back into the main model.